and tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. It's time to turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. This episode of Chilling Tales for Dark Nights is brought to you by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like, you know, what you should do. You understand what's good for you, but you just can't seem to do it. It's the human condition, folks. If that weren't true, there'd be twice as many gyms, half the fast food places, and you wouldn't even be hearing this. But there is a treatment for the human condition. It's online therapy from our good friends at BetterHelp. Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself, not against yourself. With a dedicated therapist by your side, you'll be empowered to make better decisions. Best yet, it's done entirely online and over the phone. Designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule, and no small thing, suited to your wallet. If you've ever thought of giving therapy a try, there's no better place to get it than BetterHelp. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash chilling today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash chilling. Good evening, listener. You're listening to Chilling Tales for Dark Nights. On tonight's edition, we invite you to leave behind your safe reality and descend with us into the frightening depths of the most terrifying imaginations with an audio adaptation of frightening fiction, a descent into the terror of the abyss. I'm your host, Justin Reynolds, and tonight I'll be your guide as we traverse the dimly lit corridors of your darkest dreams. This episode of Chilling Tales for Dark Nights is brought to you by Mr. Ballin. If you like stories, folks, and I know you do, you're going to love the Mr. Ballin podcast. Mr. Ballin is a former U.S. Navy SEAL who started telling strange but true tales on YouTube back in 2020 and now has a truly binge-worthy podcast you're not going to want to miss. It's the Mr. Ballin podcast, strange, dark, and mysterious stories. I'll have you know, it's aptly named... Twice a week, Mr. Ballin delivers the most hair-raising stories you ever heard. From curious tales that never escaped the local press, to fresh takes on infamous horrors, to absolutely unforgettable fan favorites, he'll walk you through each story like a living, waking nightmare. And for the true crime fans like us, that's a dream, isn't it? I recently caught the latest episode, the story behind Leatherface and Candyman. You'll hear the real-life story that became the impetus for countless horror films, including Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Silence of the Lambs, and more, and the true tale of Ruthie Mae McCoy, whose murder inspired the movie The Candyman. 
Also, do yourself a favor and check out Mr. Ballin's fan favorite episodes. Stuff like YouTube murder. Imagine this. In May 2009, someone in Guatemala uploaded a video to YouTube called YouTube murder. And within hours, it went so viral, the servers crashed. Even the president was forced to get involved. Tune in to learn the insane truth the investigation would reveal. When they say the truth is stranger than fiction, folks, they're not just whistling Dixie. Often enough, fiction is made from the truth. I'm a big fan of the Mr. Ballin podcast, and I'm sure you will be too. I mean, come on, how long have we known each other? Long enough to know that you have sophisticated taste in the realm of horror, and there's nothing more authentic than true stories. Listen to the Amazon-exclusive Mr. Ballin podcast, Strange, Dark, and Mysterious Stories in the Amazon Music app. Download the app today. Thanks for your support and for supporting our valuable sponsors. Joining us tonight to help to bring to life the imaginative fiction of Micah Edwards is voice talent. Well, it's me, your host. Now, get your ticket ready. Take your seat in our theater of the minds and brace yourself. It's time to turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Our tale this evening is written by Micah Edwards. Let's give it up for him, huh? The voices, production, and music were all orchestrated and performed by, well, by myself. That's right. How about that? Let's take a little tour on tonight's episode. Come along with me. Let's see what happens. You might like it. The story is about being submerged in the bowels of a submarine and the terrifying reality of its isolation. A journey into the dark and unknown depths of one's mind. A physical separation from the land that you were spawned from. A tale of thalassophobia. Now, I present to you, Aqua Eterna. I got the straight. That's right. Yeah, whatever. That's it, I'm out. What is wrong with you? I'm sick of it. What is your problem? I'm gonna be sick of it. Sit down. Why? You sit down. I'm going to bed. All right, all right. All right, we need another hand in. Jen, that's you in? doesn't want to play. Nah. I'm on. How about you, Nathan? Nathan!
total chaos. It rang with clanging trays, raised voices, and general hubbub. Even so, Nathan's head snapped up when the first rivet pinged free. The sharp fracturing of metal was followed immediately by a second report as the massive pressure of the ocean flung the failed piece of metal against the far wall. Water sprayed a compact but concerning fan. No one else seemed to have noticed. They all remained intent on their food and conversations, unaware of the slow bend developing in the steel plate above them. Another rivet sprang loose. The one below it was already under visible strain. When it went, the entire panel would come off all at once. Nathan shouted, The sub's coming apart! No one heard him over the din. He gesticated wildly. No one even glanced in his direction. Nathan was invisible to the rest of the mess hall as the encroaching water, which was now sheeting down the wall. Frantic, Nathan grabbed the sailor next to him. The man looked up in surprise. What's up? Before Nathan could answer, the rest of the plate gave way. The rivets popped off in a split-second succession. The rapid rattle subsumed in the triumphant roar of the invading ocean. The wall of water hit Nathan like a fire hose, sweeping him off his feet and smashing him against the bulkhead behind him. He opened his mouth to scream, but the water swarmed into his mouth and stole his voice. The cold paralyzed him. The salt burned in his eyes, nose, and mouth. The ocean was everywhere. Even as it filled the room, even as the pressure crushed the life from Nathan's body, his crewmates carried on as if nothing was happening. As the room grew dark, the man Nathan had grabbed addressed him. Stop fighting, man. It's so much easier once you let go. With one final Herculean effort, Nathan forced a yell from his frozen lips. The sound forced the water away, and suddenly he was wrapped in blankets instead, thrashing to get free of his narrow bunk. Shut up! came a tired voice from above him. I swear I actually will drown you just to get a full night's sleep. Drowsy agreement echoed from various racks around the room. Nathan mopped the sweat from his body with his damp sheets and tried to slow his racing heart. I can't believe they'd let you on a submarine with nightmares like this, grumbled his bunkmate. The metal squeaked as he rolled over, resuming his interrupted slumber. Honestly, Nathan agreed with the complaints. If he had known this would be how he reacted, he never would have signed up. The dreams are new, though. He'd always loved the ocean growing up. He never had an issue with tight spaces. Even the first month of the voyage had been no problem. The dreams had just started seemingly at random one night. They always began in an innocuous manner, mimicking some portion of day-to-day -day life on the vessel and they always ended up with his agonizing death in the uncompromising embrace of the ocean. He should probably talk to the sub's doctor he knew. The problem was that people sealed up together for months on end got antsy when they heard that someone else was having mental issues. Theoretically, the conversation with the doc would be private, but gossip had a way of getting out. Better to let everyone think it was seasickness or something else innocuous. He didn't need the doctor. He could handle this. He just needed more sleep. Nathan attempted to pull up his blankets, but they were tangled around his legs. He shifted slightly, trying to get loose from his self-imposed cocoon. As the blankets pulled free, he felt something cold and wet flop against his leg. Confused and alarmed, Nathan reached into the blankets. His hand wrapped around something scaly and damp. He pulled it free to reveal a fish struggling weakly in his grip. It whipped its tail ineffectually against his hand. Its bulging eyes stared at him, as lost and out of place as he felt. Even as he stared at the fish in his hand, Nathan felt another brush up against his body beneath the sheets. It was joined by two more, then three, and then the entire bed was alive with the thrashing of stranded fish. Their fins scraped at his skin. Their scales caught in his hair. He screamed and threw the blankets away, swiping the fish from his bed in huge sweeping waves. Suddenly they were gone. He was alone in his bed again, 
panting and cold. His bunkmate stood next to the rack with a bucket in his hand. I told you to shut up! I'm trying to sleep! He seized Nathan's head and dragged him forward, forcing him face down into the bucket. Cold seawater surged at Nathan's nose as he fought for air. He grabbed at his bunkmate's arms for purchase, but the man's skin was slippery as the scales of the fish had been. There was no air. There was no escape. The ocean had him. This episode of Chilling Tales for Dark Nights is brought to you by BetterHelp. Isn't it a mystery why we keep getting in our own way, folks? I swear, I had my day planned down to the last detail. So how is it the kale shake never materialized for breakfast? I never made my appearance at the gym, the garage still isn't cleaned, and I'm finally already halfway through this six-pack. Like you, I've been sabotaged by my own brain. We know what we should do. We realize what we need to do. But time after time, we choose the path of least resistance. It really is a mystery, isn't it? The answer is less of a mystery, however. It's a licensed professional therapist from our friends at BetterHelp. See, therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. And BetterHelp gets that done easier, more convenient, and less expensive than ever. BetterHelp's brand of remote therapy puts the help you need right in your pocket. You get a therapist you can text anytime instead of struggling on your own and begging for an appointment. Every week you can schedule phone or video chats to touch base and discuss your progress. With BetterHelp, you'll always feel connected. Whatever your problems, whatever your challenges, you'll never feel like you're facing them alone. Signing up is easy. Visit BetterHelp.com slash chilling. Fill out their questionnaire and in as few as 48 hours, you'll be matched with someone ready and willing to help you move forward. If you ever want to switch therapists, it's also hassle-free and free of charge. BetterHelp wants to make sure you get exactly what you came for. Here's why I think BetterHelp is so great. Multiple research studies and clinical trials have proven the effectiveness of talk therapy. Meanwhile, just about everyone struggles with something. Anxiety, depression, stress, trauma, they're all part of the human experience and all effectively addressed by talk therapy. What BetterHelp does is make that process easier, more convenient, and more affordable than ever. It's no wonder why over two and a half million people have used it. It's the treatment you need powered by innovation. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash chilling today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash chilling. Thank you for your support and for supporting our valuable sponsors. Nathan stared blankly at the mop in his hand. How long had he been mopping up the bathroom? He couldn't remember starting. The floor was wet, and the bucket was half empty. He must be almost done. The bucket reminded him of something. He willed the memory to surface, but it drifted out of reach, under the shadow in the depths. Sighing. He plunged the mop into the murky waters and slapped it against the floor. It was only a day until they docked. Shore leave was coming up. He could get rest on the shore. He could get away from the ever-present reek of the ocean. The smell shouldn't be able to get inside, not in their hermetically sealed environment. But it did. Everything stank of salt and dead fish. The doors to the bathroom stalls were all closed. I must have opened those. I wouldn't have mopped around them. I have to have done them already. 
The mop bucket was full to the brim, though. Had it just been half empty? Maybe he just started after all. He couldn't remember. Something moved in one of the stalls. It made a sound like a fish flopping under the deck of a boat. The stench of the ocean intensified. Nathan jammed the mop into the bucket, slopping salt water all over the floor. He made a beeline for the door and fled the room. Nothing the Navy could do to punish him would make him look in those stalls. What were they going to do? Give him scut work? He was already cleaning the bathrooms. A thought occurred to Nathan as he hurried down the hallway. They could cancel his shore leave. Reluctantly, he crept back. He could at least retrieve the bucket. They would never know if the floor had been thoroughly cleaned. It wasn't like anyone was going to check. He opened the door. The bathroom was gone. In its place was the empty, endless ocean. The bodies of sailors drifted randomly about. Their faces were corpse white. Their hands and feet were pruned from the long exposure to the water. Nathan closed the door. The outside said head. It should have led to the toilets. He did not open it again. Fires! Something was gripping his shoulder. Panicked, Nathan lashed out. Stop fighting, man! If you slept half this well in your bunk, you wouldn't be falling asleep at chow. Nathan was in the mess hall. A sailor was shaking him awake, his expression halfway between amusement and concern. His words sounded familiar for some reason. Nathan grabbed for it, but the idea slipped away like water being taken back by the tide. It was his bunkmate, Nathan thought. He didn't know the man's name. Why didn't he? They'd been on the sub together for months. The man slept above him. He had to know his name. It was gone. Slippery as an eel. Nathan wanted to ask. He thought it might help anchor him. He was afraid to admit that he didn't know. You gonna eat your calamari? Nathan looked down at his metal tray. Tentacles were piled up on his plate like thick spaghetti. They were fresh and gleaming. The wounds at the ends glistened like mouths. One of the tentacles twitched. Nathan shook his head and pushed the tray slightly farther away. Suit yourself. The sailor pulled Nathan's tray over and began to suck down the thick rubbery arms. They waved frantically as he drew them into his mouth, their suction cups popping lightly as they sought purchase against his cheeks. You holding up for a burger, Lanthrad? The man's voice was almost unintelligible around his determined chewing. Land. Nathan grabbed onto the idea as a lifeline. They were almost ashore. He would get off the sub and everything would be fine. And when it was time to get back on, well, he would sort that out when he had to. Maybe it would be fine by then. They couldn't force him. Sure, they could kick him out, even put him in jail. But at least he'd be on land. He'd be away from the dreams and the salt and the fish. He'd be free. The chewing sounds continued. They were coming from all around Nathan now. Everywhere he looked, sailors had severed squid arms heaped in front of them. They were all shoveling them into their mouths like there was no tomorrow. Disgusted, Nathan left the mess hall. The solid metal door sealed the sound away behind him. They were almost to land. Just a few more hours. He could hold out that long. Nathan paced the corridors, his eyes constantly flicking to his watch. The numbers barely seemed to change. Something was going to go wrong, he knew. A hole breach, a storm, a mutiny. He didn't know what. He only knew that somehow he would be prevented from reaching land. And so he determinedly stalked the halls, looking for anything that might be off. Every small noise from the sub, every creak, click, and groan had him searching the walls for imperfections. 
His paranoia grew with every group of sailors whose conversation fell silent as he drew close. They were all staring at him, and why not? He knew he looked crazed. But was that the only reason? Why did they all stop talking and looking at him with such suspicion? What were they hiding? Two hours to go. He knew he should see the doctor. Surely the man could give him something to calm him down for such a short amount of time. He wouldn't ask any probing questions. Not for a one-time dispension like this. He wouldn't spread rumors. The door to the doctor's room was ajar. From inside, Nathan heard a slurping, gnawing sound. It was the sound he heard leaving the missile. The sound of hundreds of mouths gnashing their way through resistant flesh. The doctor's office was only designed to hold a few men at a time. Perhaps a dozen could have crowded in if they tried. Nathan surely would have been able to see some of them through the crack of the door, though. Instead, all he saw was an empty office, with strange shadows undulating on the wall. He could not tell what cast them. He was afraid to find out. Nathan returned to the barracks to pack his duffel bag for shore leave. All around him, fellow sailors chattered, discussing plans, bragging about upcoming exploits. It was normal, simple. For just a moment, Nathan let himself relax. When he reached in to gather his clothes, he found that they were sopping wet. Angry. He looked around to find out who had pranked him. Who did this? What? But his words of accusation died on his lips. Man, you're losing your shit. Get your head on straight. Talking that mess. Water ran from the belongings of every sailor. They did not seem to notice as they packed their drowned articles into their bags. Sea water spilled everywhere, soaking the bags, covering the floor in a tile slick. It spattered up from their socks and bare feet as they walked. Yet they saw and felt nothing. Nathan crammed himself into his narrow bunk, tucked his feet up off the floor, and wrung out his clothes as best as he could. He lay in his cot, staring at the metal ceiling only inches from his face, and prayed for landfall. Please. Sailors were shouldering bags and shoving for the exits. The water on the floor was gone. The bags were dry. Tentatively, Nathan swung his feet down and touched nothing but cool metal. He joined the mess of sailors as they moved toward the top deck, certain that every shoulder he bumped was going to be cold and clammy. None were, though, and Nathan slowly allowed their enthusiasm to wash over him and carry him along. They were singing a song he didn't recognize. Some old nautical tune to which everyone else knew the words. Nathan mouthed along, trying to pick up at least enough of the chorus to join in. Off the land for a spell, a spell. No, the land can never hold me. For though I love the ground so well, so well, I'll never leave the sea. sent a chill down Nathan's spine. He suddenly felt trapped by the crowd, a fish caught in a net. Before he could begin fighting his way through the crush of bodies, however, the hatch was opened. The crowd searched for with a roar. 
Captain was dragged along with him. He knew it was a trick, a trap, but his crewmates could not hear him over their enthusiasm as they poured out into the light. And yet somehow it wasn't. He was blinking in the sunlight. His feet planted on the ground that did not sway or creak or groan. There were no walls anywhere near him. No doorways to duck through. Best of all, the ocean was a mere lapping presence behind him. And as he strode forward into town, he could feel it being left behind. It wanted him. Nathan knew. It was angry that he was leaving. Furious that he had escaped. Nathan exulted in its impotent rage. He found a bar with outside seating where he could see the sky. He ordered a burger and fries with a salad made with fresh vegetables grown in the dirt. Nothing in his meal had ever seen the sea. It was the best food Nathan had ever tasted. Many of the local hotels offered seaside views. Nathan headed farther into town, away from those. He found a place without a pool and booked a room that overlooked the main road. When he opened his window, he could hear the sounds of traffic. No matter how he strained, he could not hear the sea. He fell asleep on his bed with a huge smile on his face. Nathan found himself in the middle of a somber, seated crowd. He tensed, ready for whatever sea-based nightmare his mind might have conjured up, but relaxed when he realized he was still on land. The people around him wore suits and dress uniforms. They sat in uncomfortable folding chairs whose legs sank into the grassy field unevenly. Their attention was on a stage at the front, where an admiral stood behind a lectern and read out a long list of names. Porter Robinson, John Rocco, Abram Rubens. The names sounded familiar. Nathan could not place them. He looked around for context clues. The stage was set with several American flags. A large poster of a submarine leaned on a wire easel on one side of the stage. The wind tugged at it, but it had been pinned in place. Two more somber people sat flanking the admiral. Their uniforms identified them as Navy captains. Their role appeared to be simply to add gravitas to the situation. They said nothing and watched the crowd. William Seven, Michael Schaefer, Coy Shanks. The names circled like sharks just below Nathan's conscious memory. The setting suggested that there had been a naval disaster and that these must be the names of the lost sailors. Had he met them? Did he know them? Jan Soon, Edwin Spader. Memory rose up from the dark. Ed was the man he had grabbed in his dream of drowning, and the same one who had woken him later in the actual mess hall. He was the one who had tried to drown him in a bucket in another dream. That was the name he had forgotten, the name of his bunkmate. Edwin, how had he forgotten it? And why was his name on the list of the lost? Nathaniel Squires. Fear froze Nathan in place as he heard his own name read aloud. It was a mistake, an error. He was not lost at sea. He was here in the field, listening to the tolling of the names. He tried to stand up, but his body would not obey him. He could only roll his eyes in terror, but what he saw made it worse. The people in the crowd lolled gently in their seats, swaying as if they'd been pushed by invisible currents. Their skin was fish belly white. Their drifting hands were swollen and wrinkled from long exposure to the water. Nathan felt himself drifting along with them. Water rose up from the field, washing away their chairs, carrying off the stage. The Admiral went with it still calling out the names of the lost from his impromptu raft. As the water rose and his voice faded away, 
the corpses around Nathan began to sing a slow funeral song. The words were different from when they had sung it before on the boat, but Nathan found that he knew them this time. deepened and darkened, cutting off all light, pressing in from all sides. Although he could no longer see them, Nathan could still feel the bodies of his crewmates all around. Stop fighting, he imagined Ed saying to him. It's so much easier once you let go. With a final last grasp for the memory of air, Nathan surrendered himself to the sea. I went off the sea for a spell, the spell, and the sea to welcome me. I'm gone from the land I love so well, but I'm This episode of Chilling Tales for Dark Nights is brought to you by Mr. Ballin. If you like stories, folks, and I know you do, you're going to love the Mr. Ballin podcast. Mr. Ballin is a former U.S. Navy SEAL who started telling strange but true tales on YouTube back in 2020 and now has a truly binge-worthy podcast you're not going to want to miss. It's the Mr. Ballin podcast, strange, dark, and mysterious stories. I'll have you know, it's aptly named... Twice a week, Mr. Ballin delivers the most hair-raising stories you ever heard. From curious tales that never escaped the local press, to fresh takes on infamous horrors, to absolutely unforgettable fan favorites, he'll walk you through each story like a living, waking nightmare. And for the true crime fans like us, that's a dream, isn't it? I recently caught the latest episode, the story behind Leatherface and Candyman. You'll hear the real-life story that became the impetus for countless horror films, including Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Silence of the Lambs, and more, and the true tale of Ruthie Mae McCoy. 
McCoy, whose murder inspired the movie The Candyman. Also, do yourself a favor and check out Mr. Ballin's fan-favorite episodes, stuff like YouTube Murder. Imagine this. In May 2009, someone in Guatemala uploaded a video to YouTube called YouTube Murder, and within hours, it went so viral, the servers crashed. Even the president was forced to get involved. Tune in to learn the insane truth the investigation would reveal. When they say the truth is stranger than fiction, folks, they're not just whistling Dixie. Often enough, fiction is made from the truth. I'm a big fan of the Mr. Ballin podcast, and I'm sure you will be too. I mean, come on, how long have we known each other? Long enough to know that you have sophisticated taste in the realm of horror, and there's nothing more authentic than true stories. Listen to the Amazon-exclusive Mr. Ballin podcast, Strange, Dark, and Mysterious Stories in the Amazon Music app. Download the app today. Thanks for your support and for supporting our valuable sponsors. I hope you enjoyed Aqua Eterna as written by Micah Edwards and is performed, produced, and music by, well, you know, it's me. Micah Edwards resides in Richmond, Virginia, the world's premier home of authors named Micah Edwards. They're all over the state. It's like a real life version of Where's Waldo? But where's Micah? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's over there too, on the roller coaster. I think he's eating a pretzel. The whole page is filled with him. Ah, this must be a misprint. Effective edition. That cashier owes me! <laughs> Anyways, Micah's work runs the gamut from superhero noir, as seen in the Experiment series, to non-fiction conversational retellings of the Bible. He has rewritten horror stories for children and fairy tales for adults. More information and more stories can be found at Micah-Edwards.com. Google it. Ah, this line is true. I love music, art, films, photography, writing, the whole shebang. Anything creative, really. You take a piece of clay and mold it into something else. Hang it on the fridge, who cares? No time wasted on idle hands. On to the shows. Longtime resident and powerhouse Otis Jiry has his very own show here on our network. Scary Stories Told in the Dark, which you can hear every Sunday night. On that note... Be sure to check out the other shows we offer on our network. We have Fear from the Heartland, featuring horror stories brought to you from the Heartland airing Wednesdays. Eric Peabody's Horror Hill, a podcast dedicated to some of our deeper and darker tales. We hope you check them out. Drew Blood's Dark Tales airs Fridays, featuring some southern down-home horror. Now... Our weekly descent into the depths has just about come to a close. But before we go, I'd like to take a moment to thank you for joining us for tonight and remind you to take a moment to stop by our iTunes page and leave Chilling Tales for Dark Nights a five-star review and a kind word. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you haven't already. And of course, subscribe to us on YouTube where you can find an archive of our work going back to 2012. And consider signing up as a patron on our website, ChillingTalesForDarkNights.com, to show your support and get all the content ad-free. I'm your host of the evening, Justin Reynolds. And you know, damn sure it's been a pleasure! Tune in again next week when we once again turn off the lights and turn on the dark. <laughs> Sweet James, listener. Sweet James. <laughs> <laughs>